Scrapping the original fender guards means new ones need to be made. So I've gone ahead and I've cut a couple blanks here, uh, left and right, and I've started my preliminary marking out. Um, essentially, I'm going to end up cutting a couple pockets in them to inlay other pieces, and I'll bead roll a profile into them, and they'll take the place of the old ones on top of the, the fender, and they'll actually wrap around the forward of the engine side, which is the rear of the trailer side, which is a little bit oddball, I guess. Normally they would uh, prevent rock chips and stuff from hitting the fenders from the tow vehicle in front. Um, but that, on this case, is the back of the trailer for demonstration purposes. And uh, I want to basically bring out all of the attention to the forward end of the engine so it looks as nice as possible when it's, when it's running. So without further ado, I'll take these and I'll start by knocking out the, uh, the corners of the cutouts using a 1 and 8 inch die in the Rotex punch. And uh, we'll move on from there. Having punched the four corners of both cutouts on both covers, I'm now just going to use the router to cut along the, uh, the long legs of it using the guide to make sure I stay straight. I've gone ahead and I've marked out all of my rivet pattern here as well as at the other end of the sheet and I've adjusted my radius for the corner so it matches to create a, a perfect uh, three-quarter inch flange all the way around the panel. Um, so I'll get to drilling these guys and deburring them, clean them up a little bit and then on to the bead roller to emboss this edge. Essentially it's going to look like this but a little bit more on that later. I've only roughly cut these. I'm going to take it to the disc sander to bring the last bit down because I don't want any signs of deformation on the final product around that edge. I'm just going to give each guard a quick roll so it takes the basic contour of the fender before we go ahead and bead roll the edges. The last little bit of form work on the fender guard body is just bead rolling the edge and I did a test panel here. Um, this is one of the cutouts from the guards and I just uh, I wanted to follow a line make sure I was able to track it so that I could get a nice straight line on it without looking wonky. Worked out quite well. This is the same material, same thickness obviously. Uh, but before I, I take those over there and show you how I do it on the machine itself, I just wanted to show you the Rolls-Royce logos that I did. And this was just a, a small test panel to make sure that it would work, to make sure the sizes would work and that it would look good. It did. I was pretty pleased with that one. So I went ahead, I wanted to make it out of copper. So I went on and I did a couple of these ones. These are handmade on the bead roller. And uh, I'll just zoom in to show you the difference between that and the pressed ones that I ended up using. So if you can see in here, uh, this one is a good example. It looked really good from a couple of feet away, but I really wasn't happy with little imperfections like that. This material is 20 thou thick, so it's a little bit thinner than the aluminum was, and it was really hard to work those out. Believe it or not, this, was, uh, this one's bead rolled, and then I also took it and um, did a little bit of rework with some uh, plastic punches and everything to just try and iron those little imperfections out. And you know, it worked. It's reasonable, but it's not something that I'm happy with to put on this. So that's why I went with the option of making the press dies for them and pressing them out. So I'll put that to the side. 
And then this is the pressed ones. And you can see just those little edges. They come in really nice and crisp and without the deformation um, just off the ends of the bead roller. So we're trying to do good by the logo that we're putting on here to respect the, the engine and the detail that went into its manufacture. Uh, but it also represents my work and the work of Typhoon Legacy. So I want it to be as best possible when it goes out the door. Before I get too far ahead of myself on the guards themselves, I just wanted to show you the dies that I made for doing this. It's basically embossing, but it, they're two very thin dies that have a step on them, an opposing step, that crush the material in between them and basically joggle it as it goes along. So we saw the joggle with the press. This is essentially a rolling joggle. And uh, as long as you're accurate with the lines that you follow, it makes really nice results. The pressure, obviously, and the size of the step on the die dictate the amount of material or the height of the joggle. Um, the one thing that I find really tricky and is essentially a result of the uh, little imperfections at the end of joints is that the center of the die, trying to line that up with a stopping point is really, really difficult on here. So. Um, it does work. There's guys that do it a lot better than I do, but for, uh, for what we're doing, the pressing process worked out ideally, and these guys will work really well for doing the basic outside shape on the fender guard. So with a panel of this size, it's a bit tricky because it wants to move and shake. One thing that I've never built up for this machine was a table. A lot of guys will use a table that supports the panel really well, and it probably prevents uh, a lot of the deformation that you can get if you make a mistake. Uh, so far, I'm quite happy with the results that I've had, but I would like to eventually make a table that just exposes the dies, keeps your sheet nice and level, and uh, could perhaps make it easier to do what I'm about to do. So the biggest thing with this, I actually uh, I wear an eye patch sometimes for it if I'm doing it for a long period of time. I don't think the detail is going to be uh, that tricky on this. I'm just going to follow that outside line. And I've even erased the uh, fancy design stuff that I did on there. I, it was getting too, too much. So it's just going to be basically um, a large rectangle with rounded corners on it. It'll allow it to have a profile. The nested panels will go underneath nicely without any uh, extra pressure on the, the trailer fenders and it uh, should pre look pretty good. Um, but yeah, the, the panel is quite large, so I've got to be very careful, and it, it's tricky not to get feel the pressure of having to rush this through. <laughs> uh, I don't like to stop when I'm working with it, but uh, you can always go extra slow. And typically, the best thing I do is close an eye. I pick a spot on the dies that line up nicely and uh, go from there. Now you'll see, if I had a table in this situation, um, I don't know if you can see it from there, but the, the material has now gone at an angle this way, and it puts a little bit of extra pressure in different points on it. it uh, because I've got the protective coating, it's not an issue, but I'd probably get a, a deeper, sharper form if I had a table supporting this bottom lip and keeping everything flat. So that's the bottom of it there. Uh, looks pretty good from everything I can see. Take a rest and then I'll do the next one. Get my eyes back to normal. <laughs> now uh, I've just gone ahead and I've marked out some of the, uh, the little edges around the radius and where my router work meet. And I'm going to give them a quick file, clean up these edges so it doesn't cause any interference with the uh, next step in the procedure. Now I'll just spend a little bit of time picking all the uh, crispy bits off of this. <laughs>
With the first set of polycarbonate dies done, now I've got to cut out the inside bits again with an offset of 20 thousandths of an inch to allow for the material thickness on the part that we're forming. There we go, so check that out. Now all of our little inside pieces wiggle around and the trick is going to be to uh, ensure that everything sits correctly for each side of the die. One more thing I'm going to do to this, these uh, inside parts anyway, is to just knock off a little bit of that cooked section. I know it looks really nice, <laughs> but uh, it's also somewhat abrasive and I don't want these gripping the material. You actually want to make it as smooth as possible so that the material can slide around the dies. So you've got to be really careful with these deburring dies because they generate a lot of heat and I don't want to melt it or change its shape. I just want to take the abrasive nature of the edge off as much as possible. Before I start gluing everything together, I need to wrap my head around exactly what I want the outcome of this to be. And that is that the male components, or the smaller pieces here that will be attached to the, the male die, I want them to push the metal outward so that the Rolls-Royce logo is raised in the material and the remaining material around it is flush. So to do that and to have my Rolls-Royce logo read correctly, it's going to have to be in this orientation when it's pressed. Now to do that, I'm not going to be able to go in there and glue anything correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll everything over into this orientation and glue it that way. First step will be to uh, just quickly get all of these guys into their respective homes roughly and then line up my two outer sheets. You might have noticed that uh, when I cut out the logo itself, the initial one, I cut two rectangles the exact same size and that's to help me line up both male and female dies. With those lined up, I can go ahead and start arranging my internal components as best possible and uh, now it's the critical time to make sure that the gap is as even as possible all the way around and that's going to be that allowance that we built in there for the material itself to form without being compressed or crushed between the two die sets. And then I'm going to use this material here which is uh, methylene chloride. Methylene chloride is a very good um, adhesive for this type of material. It basically welds it together, but it's also very dangerous, so you don't want to be inhaling it or any of that good stuff. There we go. So now I've got my main R where I'd like it. I'll remove this. And with a paintbrush, just take a little tiny bit of the methylene chloride on the tip of the brush. And I'm only going to touch a few areas. You might not be able to see it on camera, but it basically sucks into the gap between the two. And it'll fuse it right there. But I'm going to leave just tacks of the adhesive around it for now so I can undo it if I need to. Uh, but also so that if under pressure the legs of the R's need to move a little bit to center themselves, it'll allow itself to do that without causing an issue. So everything gets turned upside down. And then, gotta nest everything back in. Just screw up those edges one more time.
checking the gap in there to see if I have done okay. It appears to be pretty good. And then that positions our female side. Kamsa. And I'll trace and verify its location before I mechanically fasten both of these components to this piece of medium density fiberboard. So I've done a couple of basic reference lines to make sure that my copper is in the right location. Uh, same thing, just checking the outside edge of this. We'll make sure that it's within, the top die is within uh, close enough alignment with the bottom die that everything will fit in together. So because of the size of it and the size of the steel plates that I have, I'm going to do it in two presses. Lexan's nice because it's not going to shatter or polycarbonate. Five tons. There we go. There's ten tons. Looks reasonable. Now I'm just going to back it off a little bit. I'm going to move this whole assembly over. And carefully move this. And uh, throw another 10 tons at it. Let's check it out. Oh wow. That looks really good. 